I've recently added two more cine lenses to my collection. The Maker 10mm and 35mm is now joining my 12mm and 16mm that I already have. And I have to say, the more I build up this set, the more I love the cine lens system. I finally at long last got a proper rig to use these with so I can use follow focus as is intended and it does make your life a heck of a lot easier. I'm absolutely in love with my rig to be honest, I didn't think I would be but I really am so if you'd like a dedicated video on that do let me know. So what are the benefits of using cine lenses over traditional lenses aside from looking like a complete boss? I will add I was also the best man at this wedding as well as the videographer, I don't generally rock up to a wedding wearing what everyone else is wearing. Martin's wedding. You've probably seen him on this channel a few times. He's my photography business partner and very best friend and I completely used his wedding as an excuse to try out this new system. <laughs> Thankfully the gamble paid off and the footage is awesome. So first of all, using the Maker Cine lenses, all of the cog wheels for your focus and aperture line up perfectly. So once you've set up your focus on your rig, if you take a lens off and put another one on, you can just sort of swing it out of the way, stick it back on and you're ready to rock. It's very quick to change lenses. They're quite similar in terms of weight and size. So if you are using a gimbal, when you swap one to the other, it's more minor adjustments that you need to worry about rather than rebalancing the whole blooming thing. And they all have the same filter thread size, which is 77 mil, which is great for me because all of my very favorite lenses have that as well. That's my default filter size. So these lenses fit right in with all the rest of the bunch. Cine lenses are supposed to have very uniform characteristics. So if you have a multicam setup, you can cut from one to the other seamlessly without the color science going all weird. And they have the T-stop rather than the F-stop. So that means that your aperture is more likely to completely match another lens of the same T-stop so hard not to say f-stop if you are using a multicam setup. So that's why they're awesome, that's why people use them. Let's go into something very important which is the image quality. I'm going to talk about the 35mm first because I'll be honest I love it that much. It stayed on for 90% of this wedding and then the 10mm slightly later because it's a little bit of an unconventional sort of focal length for weddings but very good for other things like architecture, gimbal shots etc. But anyway, image quality of the 35. I shot basically wide open the entire day and in the brightest scenarios I was using a hard stop variable ND filter with a little bit of mist sprinkled in. So you will see a little bit of blooming in the highlights which is from the filter rather than the lens out the box. I do think that cine lenses by design are very clinical and very sharp so for my wedding to add a little bit of character I wanted to have a little bit of the misty goodness in the brighter shots when we we're shooting backlit. And I think the combination between the clinical sharpness kept all the details in the shadow perfectly preserved, but then you had a little bit of fun. It's kind of like a mullet, you know, business in the front, party in the back. We've got all the blooming in the background, but all the detail in the shot is still there thanks to the quality of the glass. That was a very strange analogy. So I think all of this entire set is ridiculously sharp, even wide open. You will get a little bit lack of contrast or whatever, very, very, very minute, very wide open. And if you want to stop down a bit to get it even more sharp, that's absolutely fine. But for me and my needs, shooting wide open gives blooming epic results as far as I'm concerned. All of these shots are at the widest T-strap. I think it's gorgeous and I think with the longer focal length you do get some great separation from the background. I think a lot of Micro Four Thirds users might think that having the T2.2 isn't quite low enough or wide enough to get some separation and some bokeh and I think it works brilliantly for the longer focal lengths in this cine set. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Shot every time one of my lights goes off I guess. So when I look back at this footage compared to my usual lenses of choice for weddings, I feel like it looks almost like a documentary. I feel like all the detail is just so crisp and beautiful and the colours are great, everything's accurate. I just think the image quality, these Maker lenses are probably the sharpest video lenses I own. And those big words because you've seen how many lenses I actually own. I think the flares on the 35mm are pleasing and they don't sort of take over the shot, they don't wash out the shot, they're very controlled I think compared to a lot of other lenses I've used and they're still pretty pleasing. I mean they're not like the most cinematic looking flares you'll ever see but I think they are beautiful and if you don't want flares in your shots just whack a matte box on the front. Me personally I like to get a little bit of a dirty frame and a little bit of backlight and you know. 
I think it adds a bit of character, particularly for a wedding film scenario, but maybe for a documentary or for corporate work, you know, you might want to stick a matte box on and keep everything nice and clinical. So it'll do both. It will do both. I think shooting backlit is a great test for any lens, or should I say a great stress test. And I think this 35mm cine lens has passed with flying colours, pardon the pun, because the colours are blooming epic. 10 out of 10 for image quality with the 35mm and indeed the rest of the set because they're all very similar. Focusing. Now the focus throw on these lenses is a little bit extra. It's like 200 degrees and you just feel like you're turning and turning and turning and turning. And this is a good thing and a bad thing, a pro and a con if you will. You can dial in your focus minutely, but I found a workaround, ladies and gentlemen. When I was hand holding with the focus pull, Initially, it just took an age and then obviously your camera's sort of wobbling around while you're doing this. So I just got a bigger cog for my follow focus system and now it's minimised how much I have to turn the whole rig and I can even follow a subject handheld with the follow focus and it not sort of affect the image too much. Following subjects was a breeze with this system and it's 50% the lens, 50% the rig obviously. <laughs> not much left for skill. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that moving focus mid take handheld would be an option, but it very much is, provided you use, you know, a larger cog to deal with the longer focus throw. On tripods, you probably want the longer focus throw because then you've got a little bit more control. So the versatility of that setup is awesome. And can I just say, because I've been chipping away at this range for a hot minute, the older versions of these lenses didn't have the information on the top of the lens cap, whereas the newer ones do. And tell you what, because they all look so identical, it saves so much time when you're looking into your bag and going, ah, which one do I need now? I think it's a great little touch. So the newer ones do have the information on the lens caps. Focus breathing on the 35mm is basically non-existent. It's absolutely by far the best lens I've ever used that has, has coped with this sort of phenomenon. Even doing sort of longer throws further back into the scene and then back again, things stay where they should stay. And I think for the price point of these cine lenses, that is a beautiful, beautiful rendition of the image. I just think, nah. You know, if you want to do sort of budget films, you know, you don't want your scene focus breathing all over the place. You want things to sort of stay where they need to stay and not be a distraction to the audience. So 10 out of 10 for the focus breathing. So let's move on to the 10 mil. Now I had intended to use it for the wedding more, but 10 mil is a bit of an awkward focal length. You know, people tend to look not very pleasing at 10 mil. However, architecture and real estate and landscapes and stuff look blooming awesome. So I thought I'd take this lens on a little walk and get some gimbal shots to test it out. Now, because it's such a wide angled lens, I think even wide open, everything in the frame is sharp. It's stunning. And it's such a good focal length for certain scenarios. Maybe you're establishing shot in a short film. Maybe you want to do sort of sweeping gimbal shots. It's a really good addition to the lineup. And I'm glad that Maker are still adding all the way from sort of your ultra wide angle lenses all the way through. So you can pick and choose which ones will suit your needs best. Cheeky bit of vlogging. Very heavy on a gimbal and a cage. My arm's gonna fall off, but it's a really nice focal length. <laughs> I think the benefit of this sort of cine system is if you do invest in a set. You know, you could do what I do and buy one, one year, one the next, or you could go ahead and buy the whole set in a lovely little case, because I do think they do offers on that. And I think the beauty of using them as a set really will make your work shine because everything will match, you know everything's sharp, you know everything will sort of multicam setups will work together. I think they are a brilliant, brilliant set and all of these have amazing image quality which has always really, really impressed me. It's not something I would like to use for every single scenario because sometimes things are just a little bit too clinical but for your corporate work, for reliability, for you know those pin sharp images in your video, absolutely incredible for the price in my opinion. I met Martin pre-Lizzie in John Lewis and I think it's safe to say at the time he was quite disillusioned with love and then out of nowhere he met Lizzie and everything changed for him literally overnight. It was absolutely instantaneous. I remember a few weeks into their relationship, he said to me in work that this is the girl I'm going to marry. He's not. And he did! Look at him, he did! 